Mark Kaufman for Whiskey Whistle. Glen Goyne Distillery Cask, Batch 31. Cask 31, 59.1% ABV, and ex bourbon matured Glen Goyne. Should you be looking out for this Glen Goyne? Check out the Glen Goyne Distillery Cask 31 Whiskey Whistle. Hey everybody, Mark here at Whiskey Whistle, your wise choice in independent whiskey and spirits reviews. Bringing you Whiskey Review number 258. This is a Glen Goyne, a very special Glen Goyne, and this comes thanks to Dominic. Dominic, thank you so much. Dominic's a great patron and also he is a benefactor and has sent me a nice package uh, which contained five very delicious, well hopefully, I've tried two of them so far, uh, five very excellent single malt scotch whiskeys. All right, well, let's get that poured already. This is number two, and it's 59.1%, as I said, the Glen Goyne Distillery Cask, number 31. A very nice size sample, thank you again. Uh, clearly natural in color, as all Glen Goyne are. I think that should do for our review, especially being 59.1% ABV. And... Um, well, a little bit about that. This is a, a, an ex-bourbon cask. I believe it's first fill. So that's a bit different than their usual, which would be normally uh, Spanish sherry. All right. Anyway, so ex-bourbon cask, cask 31. Uh, distilled 2004, bottled um, August 26th of 2016, 59.1%. Now, um, this may be difficult to get. You may be able to get it at auction, especially if you're, you are in the UK. All right, well, we'll check out the color first of all. Then we'll check out the legs of the whiskey, followed by the nosing, the tasting, and the finish before we give it a Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score. Let's check out the color. This looks very light. Look how light that is. What a nice light color. Beautiful. This is really about the color of wheat at harvest. So not quite a deep, rich corn kind of a color, but that lighter sort of a wheat hue. Very nice color. And uh, catches the light nicely. And what a great thing that it's all natural. Fantastic. Certainly this is also unchill filtered. All right, well this says hand bottled in the distillery at cask strength and unchill filtered. Boy, I think that means that Dominic hand filled this himself. Uh, what's for sure is that he probably picked it up at the distillery. So that's just fantastic. All right, so let's check out the legs for this one. I'll get that rolled around first of all. And let's check it out. What kinds of legs are we going to see here? Very slow start. Look at that, it's just beginning. And they really hang on that upper lip there. A very slow progression downwards and the first leg just hit the bottom and here come some others. What a slow show that is. Well I've got high expectations and look at the beating at the top of the glass there. Can you see that? And those secondary legs are just beginning drizzling their way down. Beautiful. All right well I am very expectant. I have high expectations for this one. Now, I have not had very many Glen Goyne. I've had one on the channel as I spill a little bit on my iPad. Oh well. Uh, so this is number two for Glen Goyne for me. I've had a couple of others at a tasting up to I think the 15 including the cask strength which were very nice. This is an unpeated uh, Scotch single malt whiskey and um, should be very approachable to bourbon lovers I would imagine. So if you're from USA and you're heading to Scotland, go on, uh, get on to the Glen Goyne Distillery and get a nice bottle of this distillery only. I think it's distillery only release. All right. Now, despite being bourbon cask matured, I'm still getting some real fruitiness. And I guess that's the character of the whiskey. Uh, the other Glen Goyne I had was also 12 years old, I think, or was it 10? Had a very different profile to this one. 
This one is very peppery. Lots of wood smoke. And there's something minerally coming through here as well. Kind of like um, like a stone driveway, a granite stone driveway. And a little bit of a little bit of fresh, um, uh, what would you call that? Um, uh, fresh soil for potting for potting plants. And the fruit I'm smelling here, I am smelling some uh, some quince. and some unripe figs a little bit of green apple and just smelling this is actually making me feel a little bit dizzy and I guess that's that ABV so be careful when you're smelling these high proof whiskies Whew. wow potent there's a little bit of cinnamon there's quite a bit of nutmeg in there and nutmeg I usually associate with European oak. This is American oak. Uh, however, that may be the uh, the slow air drying that they're well, they're well known for. They're known for selecting very good wood. So even if they're getting some um, ex-bourbon casks, they probably made sure that those casks had been made with slow air dried wood as opposed to uh, quick dried uh, heaters. Oh, there's an interesting waxiness coming through here. Waxy and um, uh, mineral oil. Uh, mineral oil that, which is I guess like it's a, it's, that's an oil that comes from fish, and um, you'll often find mineral oil used on uh, jelly candy, which I quite like. Hmm. There's something almost cocoa-esque here as well. Not chocolate, but cocoa. Again, that's not really a note that I would normally associate with uh, with bourbon, but I guess that's the fact that it's uh, uh, Scotch whiskey. All right, on to the palate then. Cheers, everyone, and a big cheers to Dominic. Tiny little sip here. Wow. Very sour, very sharp. Probably could have used an extra year or two in the wood. Uh, but, despite that evident immaturity, There's a nice sweet, tarty, tarty, sweet, tart fruitiness that I'm quite enjoying. A little bit of very tart uh, mandarin orange. Uh, again, that green apple. I'm going to stick with unripe figs also. So green figs. And a little bit of seedless red grapes. Bit of wood smoke, some vanilla, bit of cinnamon. And the finish is um, medium length, although there's a fruity, a sticky fruitiness that's stuck back here that's carrying quite a while. So that's really nice also. Hmm, one more taste of it, neat. Hmm. As my mouth gets used to that strength, 
I'm noticing something kind of like Japanese whiskey here. So uh, certainly there isn't any in there. However, it comes off as something with a little bit of very um, exotic oak uh, influence that's coming through there. Mm. Oh, that's really mouth coating and very, very thick. Mm. Okay, now let's add some water here. I'm going to add start with one now I could have tasted this first um, and then review the second half of this little mini bottle um, however what I wanted to show you was that you know it's a sample yes it's a sample um, it's from a very trusted friend and um, that being said I wanted you to see uh, pouring it from the bottle for the first time so that you can be assured that it is what I say it is and it's also written here on the glass bottle if you can make that out now the water has tamed down that nose somewhat I'm getting a little bit more wooden furniture which is an unusual scent at 12 years old so that's interesting so this is really messing up with my notion of, of maturity uh, there was something immature and now I'm noticing something that is, that is uh, very mature for ex bourbon it's really difficult for me to say that this is a uh, an ex bourbon cask so this might actually not be first fill it could be second fill um, if so, then you get more distillery cask, uh, sorry, distillery flavors and a little bit less wood influence. And that would lend itself to this light color at 12 years of age also. Which in first fill would be darker than that. Oh, boy. That really added some potency in the flavor. Very interesting. And you keep it in your mouth and uh, you get these wafts coming through your nostrils, uh, all through your, uh, we'll call it the oral cavity, <laughs> maybe even out my ears, I wonder. I feel a little bit lightheaded. Uh, that's a really lovely experience to have that I don't have very often with whiskey. Um, Obviously, there's a little bit of uh, sulfur. Um, there's a little bit of this um, uh, certain type of, I don't know what that is. I guess it's some kind of an alcohol. You know, alcohol is not just one thing. Keep that in mind. Read it up on Wikipedia. Hmm. Yeah, there's a real bit of maturity that's come through in that short 12 years. And uh, I guess what that is, is the distillery character uh, maturing and then also presented at full proof. Hmm. And I'll use the word ethereal. So when you add water, you're getting this sort of very ethereal, um, mood altering, physiological altering, uh, physiology, physiology altering effect, which I quite like. And um, some of my favorite whiskeys do this to me. Okay, that's number two. Number one, we'd be down to about 50, 52, now we're probably down to about 46. I am very lightheaded here, boy. Now, as I uh, sit here and spin this around, uh, some other lovely donations from Whiskey Whistle friends, personal friends of mine, 
who have offered to support the channel in one way or another. And uh, this one comes from Nathan. Nathan, thanks very much for that. That will uh, come, on, come on a review maybe in the summertime. Maybe before, but uh, I've got limited, very limited time left here. Now I've mentioned Dominic already, but there's number three. Uh, sorry, there's number one and number four, and I won't tell you what those are. You'll have to wait and see. I'm, I may have mentioned it before, but I will not make mention of it now. Um, and then I got this box. What is this box? Well, let me just tell you real quick. This is a box from Mel Oak. Uh, Mel Oak is um, a very interesting American who only recently jumped into whiskey and has gone in, not only dipped, dipped his toes in, but he's actually jumped off the deep end into the water in uh, the whiskey world. And he has sent me 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 12 huge samples, 50 milliliter samples. Uh, we met the other night. I posted some photos on uh, uh, on the Whiskey Whistle Facebook page, so make sure you join there. Uh, anyway, all right, now then, with two, two milliliters of water added, uh, we're getting a bit cloudy already. So this is telling me that, we, yeah, we are probably a little bit under 46%. The nose has really calmed down and it's really reminding me of the regular 12 year old. This has got some candy lipstick scent. The lip smackers or whatever it is that kind of sweet stuff that girls put on their lips around about um, middle school. Interesting. Uh, something kind of like, um, um, what's that red mixer called? Grenadine? There's a grenadine note coming through here. It's still very fruity, which is taking me for a ride because it's uh, bourbon matured, but it's acting very much like uh, a sherry matured. Hmm. Still got the spice in there. All right, onto the palate then. Cheers again. Hmm. That's just about at the sweet spot. Oh, it's very fruity. Really delicious. This is con. For, uh, this has really gone from uh, something a little bit on the immature side to being something very approachable, very drinkable. Okay, we were on the palate. Hmm. Rich, fruity sweetness. A little bit of cinnamon. Um, it's got a real nice creaminess to it as well. A little bit effervescent. That's that um, that very active bourbon cask, obviously. Hmm. A lot of ginger, candied ginger. The finish is very drying in a pleasant way uh, it's making my eyebrows sweat uh, that's that uh, the tartness and the dryness uh, and just a hint of sweetness that's making me feel that way mm. one last taste mmm Something a little bit hazelnutty. And the finish again, drying medium length. Still got a lot of that coating left in my mouth. 
Well, that's really interesting. I didn't expect it to be this enjoyable um, from the first scent. Anyway, it's really come around for me and I'm really, really enjoying it a lot. All right, let's get on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glen Goyne, 2004, 12-year-old, distillery cask number 31. What is that going to be? Well, folks, it's going to be 89 out of 100. Yes, you heard right. 89 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glen Goyne, 12 year old, batch number 31, cask 31, that is. And uh, this is 59.1% ABV. Delicious. And I think uh, if it weren't for that just initial sense of, of immaturity, it probably would have been 90, maybe even 91. As I sit and sip this, Hmm. That's really interesting. I'm getting a little bit of papaya in here now. Peppery papaya. No mango. All right, well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click to subscribe right over here. And also get involved with Patreon. Patreon.com backslash whiskey whistle. Patreon is spelled P A T R E O N. Uh, become a patron and get the newsletter, get the Patreon patron priority pass and see my videos about a day early when they're ad free before they go public. Check that out. There's lots more to come and folks, thanks again. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.